Presidential candidate and Vice President Lenny Robredo removes re-electionist Senator Juan Miguel Miggs Zubiri from her Senate slate after he openly endorsed her rival, the late dictator's son Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. Robredo spokesperson Barry Gutierrez says on Wednesday, April 27, Zubiri was dropped from the ticket of Robredo and her running mate, Senator Kiko Pangilinan, after the Senate Majority Leader publicly supported Marcos in late March. Zubiri's removal from the Robredo Pangilinan tandem's ticket also comes about a week after the senator said Marcos Jr., who is leading major pre election surveys so far, would not be a dictator like his father, Ferdinand Marcos. Gutierrez adds the lone female presidential candidate will be sticking to an 11 candidate slate, with the May 9 elections less than two weeks away. Meantime, Cebu gubernatorial candidate Ace Durano clarifies on Tuesday, April 26, they did not withdraw the invitation for Vice President Lenny Robredo to join their rally in Talisay City. Durano says her camp opted to skip the event after his party, the Partido Pilipino sa Pagbabago, endorsed Ferdinand Marcos Jr. So from there, ang, ang, ang team ni Didi Lenny was hesitant already uh, to appear si Didi Lenny. But all along, sa sige na mong storya sa atong campaign team and sa team ni Didi Lenny, okay naman gyapon na DP Lenny will come here. Okay? As I said, this is not a PPP event. You know, this is the panagtagbo, this is a multi-sectoral, multi-color event na mo ni Vice Go. The Vice President was supposed to return to Cebu less than a week after her rally on April 21 to attend the Durano de Vida rally. Durano, the PPP president for Central Visayas, says he did not sign the party's manifesto which officially endorsed Marcos's candidacy. Despite rumors of a potential endorsement by the former tourism secretary, Durano did not endorse a presidential candidate during the rally. In related news, Vice President Lenny Robredo's youngest daughter sweeps across northern Luzon provinces on Monday, April 25, and Tuesday, April 26, stressing her mother's message of unity. Jillian emphasizes her mother's track record of service and message of inclusivity as she speaks before supporters of the Lenny Kiko tandem in Vigan, Ilocos Sur, and La Trinidad Benguet province. Meantime, the head of the Robredo People's Council in Quezon Province, Dante Gatdula, has been missing for five days now. The 57-year-old, who is also chairman of Akbayan Candelaria, left his home for a meeting at 7 a.m. on Saturday, April 23, and has not returned since then. His wife Betsy says she received messages from people saying they have her husband. The Philippines kicks off the three-day local absentee voting on Wednesday, April 27, for select Filipinos who are allowed by law to vote ahead of Election Day. More than 84,000 individuals who applied for COMELEC's approval will take advantage of the local absentee voting. These include military and police personnel who will be on duty on May 9 in places where they are not registered voters. Media practitioners who will be covering Election Day are also allowed to avail of this option. Government officials and employees, including those who will be assigned abroad to perform election duties, are also allowed. Polling places are open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. until Friday, April 29. The manner of voting and the counting and canvassing of votes will be manual. The counting and canvassing will take place at the main COMELEC office in Intramuros, Manila after polls close on May 9. Local absentee voters cannot vote for local posts. They can only cast their ballots for president, vice president, senators, and one party list group. Need more context, clarity, and perspective? Get the full picture with Rappler Plus. With exclusive content and events, you'll get an opportunity to discuss issues with reporters, experts, and featured guests while helping Rappler continue its fearless journalism. Join now. Presidential candidate Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. says on Tuesday, April 26, the Philippine government has done everything to bring peace to Muslim Mindanao. Marcos, who as a senator was blamed for the delay of the Bangsamoro Basic Law, insists it was because the law back then had parts that were unconstitutional. 
the Bangsamoro Organic Law was enacted only during the time of President Rodrigo Duterte, which allowed for the creation of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or BARM. Several massacres were committed in western and central Mindanao during the Marcos dictatorship. The BARM government cites the Jabida massacre as the trigger for self-government in Mindanao. Marcos Jr. speaks about the issue at a rare press conference in Cagayan de Oro on Tuesday, April 26. But organizers of the invitation-only press conference draw flack for excluding CDO's more veteran journalists and screening questions to be asked a day before the event. Throughout his campaign, Marcos has been averse to debates and media and is consistently hard to interview. The Department of Health on Wednesday, April 27, reports the country's first case of Omicron BA.2.12, a subvariant of the highly transmissible Omicron variant, driving a fresh surge of infections in the United States. The case is a 52-year-old Finnish female who arrived in the country from Finland on April 2. The DOH says the case had traveled to a university in Quezon City and then to Baguio City to conduct seminars. Nine days after her arrival in the country, she experienced mild symptoms such as headache and sore throat. The case has been tagged as recovered and returned to her home country on April 21 after finishing seven days of isolation. The World Health Organization has not classified Omicron BA.2.12 as a variant of interest or concern, and there is not enough evidence whether it can cause more severe symptoms. The Movie and Television Review and Classification Board, or MTRCB, removes on Tuesday, April 26, the film Uncharted from Philippine cinemas in response to a request from the Department of Foreign Affairs. The DFA asks the MTRCB to reevaluate and pull out the screening of the film for showing an image of China's Nine Dash Line claim, which was invalidated by an international tribunal in 2016. In a press release, the DFA explains the arbitral tribunal found China's Nine Dash Line to have no legal basis and says China never had historic rights in the waters within the Nine Dash Line. The MTRCB has ordered the film's distributor, Columbia Pictures, to stop showing the film in cinemas unless and until they are able to remove the objectionable scenes. Meanwhile, K-pop girl group TWICE member SANA tests positive for COVID-19 and is staying in Japan to self-isolate while she recovers. In a statement, TWICE's label JYP Entertainment announces SANA was diagnosed after taking a PCR test to fly back to South Korea. TWICE is currently on their fourth World Tour 3 to promote their third and latest album, Formula of Love. <laughs> 